Raise your hand if you're wearing long johns right now. <laughs> Me too. Wait, why can't they be called long janes? <laughs> Sexist. Yes, it's the first week of 2018, and I can already say it's the greatest week of 2018. It is! Yeah. Danger, intrigue, chaos, and that's just in Joy Bayar's head. Trump needs to be medicated and hospitalized <laughs> at this point, or he is going to just kill all of us. Well, that's rich. Bayar commenting on sanity. It's like Harvey Weinstein commenting on feminism. <laughs> anyway, 2018's been great. The high point so far, right out of the box, Trump tweaks everyone with a tweet about North Korea's nukes. The media response, like my favorite scene from Total Recall. Get ready for a surprise! <laughs> it was a cavalcade of convulsions. He is not merely being cavalier with a threat about nuclear war. He's being cavalier in a way that makes him seem demented and deranged. This is not how we plan to start the broadcast, but President Trump has just tweeted, and it is almost literally a bombshell. Perhaps never have we seen a man whose profound uh, sexual and masculine insecurities are literally threatening to annihilate the planet. Oh, my. Okay, Captain Therapy. <laughs> Someone's projecting, but nice hair, I gotta say. Anyway, it's like the world's ending, but I bet there's a drug for that. Which is what the president is saying about nuclear war, yeah. bragging about... Has the media the convinced you that the world is about to end? Former director of national intelligence thinks that the kind of statements the president's making are dangerous. What are we doing? We've got to hide. Why? Because this president has brought us to the brink of nuclear annihilation. Again, with this I gotta go. Are people taking you less seriously every time you try to tell them the world is ending? You should stop worrying about the bomb and use the bomb. The bomb? It's called Apocalypse. Never heard of it. How's it work? Apocalypse is the FDA approval pending formula that will seal your lips together permanently so other people don't have to deal with your breathless hysteria. Sounds too good to be true. Let me give it a shot. Does this make America less safe? I, I would have to say yes. Not, not simply on the authority of somebody like James Clapper, which is considerable, but just everything we know about this. We know that the, the Chinese country... Too late now. Order Apocalypse today. Side effects may include never speaking again. <laughs> Use it only on your mouth. All right. <laughs> I learned the hard way. Lights were off in the bathroom. But the real media star this week, that shiny orb from CNN, the national hall monitor himself, Brian Stelter, calling the Twitter police on the president. I've asked uh, Twitter spokesman, does this violate Twitter's terms of service, uh, making this kind of threat toward North Korea? Uh, so far, no immediate comment from the company, still waiting to hear. I think they're trying to decide if this kind of tweet, referring to a nuclear button that he knows how to use and it works, whether that actually is a violation mm. of the terms of service. Oh, my. Every dorm has this guy. <laughs> CNN is no longer fake news, it's fink news. <laughs> if Brian were in prison, he'd sell you to the warden for an extra cheese sandwich. <laughs> anyway, they're wrong about Trump's tweets. Unlike the media, they actually work. North and South Korea are finally talking again. Why now? Could it be Trump? Who knew he could be such a great marriage counselor? <laughs> He's been married three times. I guess you don't know how something works until you break it. Oh. Meanwhile, <laughs> see Trump's response to the Iranian uprising and his suspension of military aid to Pakistan. That's quite a contrast to Obama. All Obama wanted really was a legacy. Trump instead wanted action. Legacy, schmegacy. Obama thought he was a global leader, but the ditherer in chief put the world's desires before ours. Trump's pretty much the reverse. He forces the tough questions. Whose side should you be on? Iran's people or their mullahs? The citizens or their tormentors? Oddly, some of our very own leading feminists here are silent. 
guess they think a full body burqa is a choice and stoning for adultery is great exercise. <laughs> Meanwhile, the stock market gained 1,000 points faster than ever. There's a surprise. Companies react positively to a president who creates a healthy business climate. Who knew that could happen? <laughs> but instead, the media focuses on a book detailing chaos right after the Trump win, as if that's a surprise. No, it's a reminder that a Clinton or any other crony didn't get in and that they got beat by someone with way less knowledge specific to their expertise. And that's gotta hurt. A non-political salesman crushing you? It's another historical first. This isn't just a presidency, it's a phenomenal roll of the political dice that reveals three essential truths. That politics only damages people who place too much emphasis on politics. That our system is bigger than any one person. And that people can't surprise you. You think Kim Jong-un or Bill Kristol saw this kind of Trump coming? Do you think Trump saw Trump coming? <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? All I know is it's been a pretty good week. The economy, energy, shrinking government, foreign policy. He's nothing if not bold. And it makes me wonder, what can be better than one Trump? i uh, ask you to tune into the screens and then I'll continue from there. Thank you for being with us today. The historic tax cut I signed into law just two weeks ago before Christmas is already delivering major economic gains. Hundreds of thousands of Americans are seeing larger paychecks. Mm. That may be the weirdest thing I've ever seen. And I have a mirror above my bed. <laughs> Let's welcome tonight's guest, I suppose. He made Bin Laden a truly holy man. <laughs> By filling him with holes. Anyway, his book details how he did it. It's called The Operator, former Navy SEAL Rob O'Neill. <laughs> he splits more sides than a butcher on meth. Comedian Tom Cotter. Nice man. <laughs> Her eyes are glassy, her views are sassy. National Review reporter Kat Timpf. Yeah. And 2018 is how much he benched this morning. <laughs> Former bodyguard, massive sidekick, Tyrus. Yeah. Rob, I'm gonna ask you uh, how to, to rank the first week uh, from one to kumquats. <laughs> it's an interesting week for sure. And yeah. if you kumquats. Okay, come on. Um, <laughs> just naturally with the tweets coming out, the tweets are the best way for the president to talk directly to people. Mm -hmm. um, now, I mean, I, I use Twitter for entertainment. He does too, apparently. <laughs> He's the commander in chief. There are some things I think it's kind of like the thing with, you know, you write the nasty tweet or the text that you don't send for a few hours to think about it. Yeah. But he's getting attention, and I think. I mean, you can have a sense of humor with things, and that's his way of joking. Should we be joking about nuclear war? No, but I mean, I don't think that that necessarily will stop. If, if we're at a point where we're going to lead to nuclear war because of a tweet, it's, you know, we're further in the future than, yeah. than I thought it Yeah, is. yeah, and what a crazy, fun world that would be. Huh? <laughs> uh, uh, Tom, yes. welcome to the pro I'm glad you brought your vest. Thank you. I'm bringing the sweater vest back, everybody. Yes, it's coming yes. back. Yes, you're the, you're the, it's called the Santorum. That's what it is. I think that's... <laughs> Or maybe, no, that's something else. Hey, uh, <laughs> thoughts so far, 2018? Uh, he said that it would be so great that our heads would spin, and my, <laughs> my head spun this morning. Yes, uh, yeah. yes. Kind of like The Exorcist. <laughs> yeah, it's great. So far, so good. <laughs> yes. Except for the hypothermia. Yes. Other than that, it's been spectacular, but you yeah. can't blame him on that. Right? Yeah, any high points, low points? The stock market. Again, yeah. how many records could we break in one week? It's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. you know, they, they, the Dems have nothing really to whine about in that realm right now. We're kicking butt. Mm -hmm. So I love that. I wish I had money in the market. You don't? You don't uh, have big I, I have money in one market. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> what, Tyrus? <laughs> oh, you saw where that joke was going. Yep, I just <laughs> pumped the brakes. All right. Uh, what, do you, what do you think of so far? The diplomacy, the domestic policy. 2018, is it the best year ever? <laughs> It's five days old. <laughs> I don't know if it's the best day. I think it was the best week for really seeing what is important to the media. Mm -hmm. And it's it's shameful that a that a book that would be the same in any business, if anyone's ever hung out in the locker room Not true. or the water cooler with a disgruntled employee who got demoted, <laughs> would say the same thing. Yes. <laughs> so, I mean, on behalf of myself and everyone else who likes doing good at their job, Bannon. <laughs> <laughs> well said. 
way, Greg, I haven't been on the show in a while, but we're not live. No, no, we're not live. No, that'll be like a beep or a, maybe a dolphin sound would be nice. I like that. That'd a dolphin cool. sound. Put a dolphin sound, please, over what Please, the, New Year, yes. it's and, dolphin sound. And not the Bannon part, but, the yeah. other part. Yeah. All right. All right, Kat, you have the floor or the seat or however you would like it. Go, say a thing. All right. <laughs> Uh, let's see. At the risk of being called a cuckservative, yes. I did not love the tweet. Mm. And, but that was really my reaction. I was like, yeah, I don't love this. And then I went out on about my day <laughs> uh, with zero concern about being blown up yeah. whatsoever. Yes. I, I, I don't understand why you can't just kind of not like something anymore. Right. That's not an option. You have to be convinced it's going to kill you. And I have enough stuff to worry about killing me already. That's so. true. That's true. Me. <laughs> For one. Yes. Well, that's a small threat. <laughs> yes, 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 much. yes. Um, you can see me coming a mile away or smell me. You know what? I have a theory. Trump, for, Trump had no resolutions, right? Of course not. He had none. He was like, he didn't He's get done he didn't at say, all. He didn't say less tweeting, less no. tweeting. Uh, <laughs> maybe I'll lay off CNN. Uh, it, he probably said one less cheeseburger after midnight. He's on top of the world, Ma. Yeah. Why would he change anything? Yeah. And the North Korea thing, this is little game. It's called good cop, bad cop. Right. He makes a bold statement. North Korea goes, huh? And then when Tillerson talks to him, they want to talk now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, gonna, yeah. He's pull. not in the room with the button. He's making it. And if you notice, Kim Jong-un seems to like to be, I'm on the same level yeah. arguing with the president. Yeah, People no, are taking notice of me. Oh, you know what? Call South Korea. Let's talk to him. So, I mean, he's not really going to push the button, jackasses. He's <laughs> making a statement that draws attention. And everyone looks at North Korea and Korea, oh, well, you know, maybe we need to do something because well, it's true. His button is bigger than ours. I just hope before the, with this show tapes and airs, he doesn't push the button because you're going to look really stupid, Tyrus. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure we'll Yeah, I'm sure there'll be I'm people sure walking we'll, around yeah, going, that's hey, good Tyrus, point. nice call, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, but yeah, we probably won't air if that happens. Yeah, we're in yeah. nuclear yeah. war. Yeah, we'll be. Of all the things to. going on, I'm going, man, they're going to hear what I said. <laughs> man, damn. <laughs> damn, I got it'll three be like, arms. It'll be like the, yeah, the beginning of the My road. My flying, but. Uh, yeah, I'm worried about what I said on the Greg show. Come on, man. <laughs> All right. We got more coming up. Donald's giving out awards to people in the media. I hope I get best pecs. I've been working out, you know. <laughs> Later, Cat Tim's master class, which means she's an expert at something. Finally. <laughs> By the way, the producers asked me to tell you this is a unicorn horn. In case you don't get any ideas and I'm into something really weird. Anyway. All aboard for Trump's award. Donald has sent over 37,000 tweets in his lifetime, but this week's may have been a keeper. Quote, I will be announcing the most dishonest and corrupt media awards of the year on Monday at 5 o'clock. Awesome! That's when the five is on. <laughs> He's gonna make Monday so easy for me. I'm gonna be drunk. No pants under the desk. Thanks, Mr. President. I'm not even gonna shave my face. All right. But that award name is kind of a mouthful. The most dishonest and corrupt media awards. Uh, how about we call, just call them the discos, which is short for dishonest and corrupt. See, discos. And it'll cover dishonesty and bad reporting in different categories. Although I'm not sure what that means. Maybe Trump's breaking it down by gender, like worst male performance, worst female performance, or by policy, worst domestic fake news, worst foreign fake news, or the big one, which I guess would be the best picture of fake news, my votes for Brian Ross and his overblown story about Donald Trump and Russia, which led to this. Breaking news. Oh, my God. Oh, breaking news. ABC News' Brian Ross is reporting Michael Flynn promised full cooperation to the Mueller team and is prepared to testify that as a candidate, Donald Trump directed him to make contact with the Russians. Yes! <laughs> Uh, that didn't work out. I think the breaking news there was that she could read. <laughs> anyway. Uh, uh, poor guy got suspended. Anyway, all right, Tom. Um, uh, what do you make of these awards? 
Uh, there's going to be 5,000 nominees in each category, <laughs> first of all. It's, 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 it's a train wreck. I, I, I watched another network that rhymes with CMM on the night that <laughs> Trump was elected at 3 in the morning just to watch them have a nervous breakdown. Yeah, they, all, yeah. they were literally tears. I know. There were people crying. People at Stephanopoulos was, like, weeping. Yes. So uh, I, I just think it's going to be a field day. I, you know, that's why he tweets, because he needs to connect with people directly, and because the media is just going to besmirch him and throw him under the bus at every turn. <laughs> besmirch? Sorry. I said besmirch. <laughs> I did. You like that word, don't you? Yeah. That's in my head forever. Yeah, it is a great word. Kat, uh, uh, what should the, how should the media respond to this? Should they? They're going to love it. Yeah. Let's be honest. Two reasons. Anybody who wins one of these will love it. First of all, they don't like President Trump, so they'll say his dismissal is a compliment. Also, nobody's in the public eye or pursues a career where they're going to be in the public eye if they don't, on some level, think all recognition is good. Mm -hmm. Like me, for example. Yes. I won the messiest desk award every single year in grade school. Mm -hmm. And I know that it's not technically an award, but I was getting my name out there. You know, <laughs> it's true, it's true. And you haven't and you haven't changed at all. I mean, no. it's actually it's spread beyond your desk. I am afraid. Well, now that my desk is so messy at work, other people just put their trash on it because they assume I won't notice. Yeah, their trash. It's their. It's not all. It's about seventy percent my trash. <laughs> yes, that's. That thirty percent is very rude. All right, Rob. Uh, do you think? Um, I think this actually helps the media. He helps the media because I call it the. PTW, prove Trump wrong effect. So you know he's look. You don't want him to have any ammo. So you actually better yourself. Well, I mean, they're they're taking advantage of this right now. They're putting out ads in Times Square and front page things in newspapers. True. Like Trevor Noah and, and Stephen Colbert. They're having fun with it. And I wish it could be at a point where you could make light of some of the stuff and maybe. One of the things where we learn from differences, not from all agreeing, it's like, like for me, yeah. like patriotism isn't where, uh, you know, we're like Joy, Joy Behar cheering because the, oh, the president might fail, which means the country might fail, and my party wins. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's, we should be for America. I, I don't know what the point I'm getting at, but there's no... Yeah. Yeah. Even at a point, uh, even at a point of working for Fox News, and all of a sudden when Fox News says something must be wrong and everyone else is right, you know, it's just it's, 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 it's this weird, uh, this political thing. Hillary Clinton, 33,000 deleted emails after a subpoena from Congress, mm -hmm. and they're like, oh, that was just misplacement. You don't misplace 33,000 emails, <laughs> and then in case you can't find the, you know, the delete folder, you go outside and shatter the damn hard drive. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but they won't report that because that was just, uh, she just doesn't know what she was doing. If she deleted, I just want to know how to do that. If that turns out that it's true, because that's a yeah, that's a lot of pressing, Tyrus. A lot of pressing. All right. <laughs> that's your life. That's gonna be your life. All right. Uh, what do you make of these awards? Well, uh, you know, not just the awards, but it's actually besmirched the NFL. Right. Uh, ratings are down on all the other major things because of all this feud between mm -hmm. President Trump and the media. Yeah. And I think most of these reporters, it's an award. Mm. I bet they'll rock the trophy. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I bet they'll take it. I would, I they'll would. be like, oh, I'll wear it as a badge of honor. Oh, it is. Yeah. Is there a check? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, literally, they will not resist, because if, if it was really about their integrity or whatever, they wouldn't acknowledge it. Mm -hmm. It's just like they tell you, you know, ignore somebody or whatever, they wouldn't acknowledge But they are acknowledging, because if one, it'll get them some more ratings. People will want to see what their response is. And two, if he does, and usually President Trump, everything he does is big time, there'll yeah. probably be some lovely trophies mm -hmm. to the point where <laughs> I might want to drop some lies about him this weekend so I could possibly pick one up. Here's one better. <laughs> I wish he'd push it back. We could host it. Yeah, that's a good idea. You know idea. what I'm saying? Oh, I would host it and admit it. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if you we'd know? be allowed to, though. Why not? You know, I think. You think we're up for one? I, I, I think we might be. You know, I think. I mean, it's um, a trophy. I think, I think Stelter should get one. You know, Stelter's really grown up. He was a guest on Red Eye. I think I gave that little fella his start, and look where he is now. For or the, scarred him to make him what he is today. I think that he should win the. I, I don't know what it is. Creepy he, guy award? Well, no, best. I guess be, overall best disco, because if you look at him, he kind of reminds me of the strobe light from Saturday Night Fever. All right. Still to come, it's the book no one has read, but everyone's talking about. No, not Atlas Shrugged. <laughs> Jab at you libertarians. We discuss the salacious new book on President Trump's White House next. Live from America's News Headquarters, I'm Marianne Rafferty. A real scare for passengers aboard a JetBlue flight tonight. The plane heading to the Dominican Republic returned to Boston's Logan Airport when smoke filled the plane's cockpit. 
Passengers and crew members also complained of an unusual odor. Several passengers reportedly became ill. JetBlue is inspecting the plane. And tonight, legendary astronaut John Young is being remembered as a space pioneer. He was NASA's longest serving astronaut and the first person to fly six times into space. He was also the ninth man to walk on the moon. Young died Friday at 87 following complications from pneumonia. And actor Jerry Van Dyke has died. He appeared on numerous television shows, but is probably best known for his Emmy nominated role on the TV series Coach. He's the younger brother of Dick Van Dyke. Jerry Van Dyke was 86. I'm Marianne Rafferty. Now back to the Greg Gutfeld Show. Trump's no lover of this hardcover. I speak of the scathing new book, Fire and Fury, inside the Trump White House, which describes the dysfunction and infighting during the 2016 campaign and the first year of Donald Trump's presidency. The White House called it trashy tabloid fiction. Hmm. And earlier this week, the president had sent a cease and desist letter to stop publication, <coughs> but the book was released on Friday. I've already read it, meaning I'm lying. I didn't. <laughs> Anyway, here's the gist from what I can tell from the excerpts. Trump is just like us, and that he was surprised he won. Some of his employees get annoyed by him. Every boss has those, except me, of course. I am beloved. <laughs> he eats cheeseburgers in bed. Don't we all? You should see what I eat on the toilet. <laughs> oh, stop booing me. And on the first day on the job, there was chaos, so what, we knew that already. And besides, every first day or week on the job is hell. It still is for me. Here's me trying to drive myself to work today. Oh my God. Oh my God. Yeah. I was all, made me an hour late. Cat. Theory, you Everybody says about their boss. God knows what's been said about me, you know, by other people who happen to work with me. Who knows? Isn't that normal, Cat? Yeah. Don't you dare tell yeah, me. it is normal. It is normal. No, what Kat. do you think we yeah? No. Uh, but what I don't understand is why this person was allowed access to the White House in yeah. the first place. I mean, that just doesn't make any sense. You're gonna have somebody who is known for doing this kind of stuff. And saying, yeah, yeah, come on over. I mean, President Trump says he didn't give him any access, but he, he loves attention so much that I'm certain that he absolutely did. But that's like if you really like liked a guy and you went out on a date with him and then invited a gossip columnist who's also that guy's ex-girlfriend. <laughs> that's how bad this is. Mm, it is. It is. I do think that uh, maybe he didn't think about it all the way through, Tom, but that he's not a politician. No. This is what happens. I think Bannon was friends with this guy, right? And didn't he have him in here? <laughs> yeah. That's my hypothesis. I'm going with it. You want to make fun of a hypothesis? Hey, there it is. No, I was I was I liked Brismerch. All right, we'll go with that. I've well, always wanted to use it in a sentence, bro. Good. And you well, put it out there for me. Smirching Trump, so it's yeah. perfect. I think I love when CNN right. reported it. They kept saying Wolf, Wolf, which is the guy's name. But you're yeah. thinking it's Wolf Blitzer, so you yeah. think it's credible. It's not credible. <laughs> it's, it's not crap. credible. I, it's, I mean, I have a th I, I think, Rob, that some of it, a lot of the quotes are real, but he uses it to well, shape a story. Well, they're going to find out soon that a lot of the quotes aren't real. The most surprising thing you're going to find in the book, though, is the button on the desk, the magic button they keep talking, actually opens a trap door to drop the person into a bondage dungeon that was <laughs> built by Bill Clinton and Matt Lauer. Oh, I had no... You can see that one. Nice. I, I might have made that up. I think that's uh, that's in page 75. <laughs> yeah, I haven't gotten to that part, Tyrus. You already talked about this in the A block, but you get a second stab at it. How about it? Man. <laughs> Bannon, man, he's terrible. <laughs> Listen, he, this, you are 110 percent right. This was clearly one of those issues where Trump's loyalty has come back to bite him on the ass. Mm -hmm. Bannon was probably 100 percent behind this guy's access. The entire, from what I've seen, uh, the book is pretty much him bitching, and it's also during the time when he was losing favor. Mm -hmm. The Trump looks to me like he runs his, his, he ran his campaign, and he's running his presidency a lot like his TV show where he has groups of people working against each other so, the be so he gets the best idea, so people compete. Mm -hmm. So, of course, when you compete, you're going to talk trash, bury, sabotage, stab people yeah. in the back. Remember when you stabbed me in the back? They do things like that. <laughs> I'm kidding. She never did that. I stabbed her in the back. But the point <laughs> is, they fight. It's no. a pit. And then the best idea, then he picks them, and whoever gets favor 
the president well, gives that well, Ivanka yeah. got favor, so Bannon got pissed. He was writing so he, stuff about yeah. the president during the transition, mm -hmm. and President Trump noticed that, and that's how he's going to get access. This guy's writing good stuff, so we're going to let him in, and there's going to be chaos with any turnover. And this guy's a wolf in sheep's yeah. clothing, if you will. Mm. See what I did there? I like yeah, it. Thank I like you. Thank you. That was yeah. and, um, but he knew he knew that. that if, I don't get it. If he got if he got favor <laughs> if he got favor with the White House, they're going to let him in and just trust him because they, they you know they, they weren't part of the swamp at first. They don't realize that a. Uh, you know the media is not going to be that honest, and they will. They will. They'll, they'll no, be never no. trust yeah. anyone ever. Yeah, well, that's true. <laughs> ever, ever. All, all, including all you. The, mi <laughs> <laughs> oh, the microphone is always on. Yeah, that is Everything's true. on. By the, the way, no, this is the cell phone is now a recorder, and and and. But have you noticed that this guy, uh, Michael Wolf, he reminds me of somebody. Do we have a side by side? <laughs> Glasses on. And, uh, I, I I have to defend Michael Wolf and think I think he's a good writer. I have said this before, and I do think a lot of that is true because in chaos people say stuff. Okay, I used this metaphor on the five yesterday. Like when a sports team is going under transition, when they're getting new coaches, there are players that are I've angry. Been that player. Yeah, there are players that are angry and players that are going to stick around, and the players That's that right. aren't are angry are going to be talking crap about the other guy and th by the way you know this happened in the Clintons you know this happened to Obama the problem I think with the book is that he shaped it too much to form a narrative to be a story that he wanted to tell so the little pieces might have been true but then what he did was he took them out of context and shaped it into a book that is selling like hotcakes by the way do hotcakes sell I don't know no <laughs> boy that's a really bad old joke isn't it <laughs> yeah thanks for the courtesy laugh I <laughs> killer of bin Laden. <laughs> Call me when you've done something. <laughs> I host a show. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Coming up is the out to impede your weed. Jeff Sessions' new policy on legal pot. That's next. <laughs> He's out to fry your innocent high. This week, Attorney General and my squash partner, Jeff Sessions, lifted Obama-era rules that discouraged enforcement of federal marijuana laws in states where it's legal. In a one-page memo, my favorite kind, Sessions says when devoting resources to marijuana cases, prosecutors should consider the seriousness of the crime and the impact of the community. It's, uh, it's still unclear if Sessions' decision will impact sales of the drug, but in places where legal pot has flourished, lawmakers are not happy. Here's Colorado Republican Senator Cory Gardner. Then Senator Sessions told me that marijuana simply wasn't going to be on President Trump's agenda. That was back in the spring of 2016, and up until 8.58 this morning, that was the policy. One tweet later, one policy later, a complete reversal of what many of us on the Hill were told before the confirmation, what we had continued to believe the last year, and without any notification, conversation, or dialogue with Congress. Completely reversed. Dude, mellow. <laughs> Somebody get him an edible. What we had continued to believe the last year, and without any notification, conversation, or dialogue with Congress. It does work. <laughs> All right, Kat, is this a mistake on Sessions' part? I find it kind of confusing. I'm wondering if he's just doing this for his conscience and then saying, you guys go ahead. He's doing it because he's weirdly obsessed with drugs mm, and who the isn't? drug war. <laughs> um, it sh there shouldn't even be federal power in this area to begin with. Supreme Court ruled that it's because of under the powers for interstate commerce mm -hmm. that the federal government even has control of this at all and I think that that doesn't make any sense and I think anyone would say it doesn't make any sense uh, marijuana should be not just decriminalized but legalized mm -hmm. there's no argument otherwise there really isn't especially when people say oh but this 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 but, but they drink alcohol it's like the same thing I have a theory on that yeah <laughs> but I'll get to that theory but I just it's weird I can't imagine Jeff Sessions in his life with all the stuff he has going on at the DOJ and the thing that he's thinking in his head is I've got to keep all these strangers away from that plant I mean come on <laughs> Uh, Rob, you were high when you killed bin Laden. Three stories up. Yeah. Just high in Pakistan. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's funny. Listen to Cory Gardner. I'm sure he has the best intentions. He strikes me as someone that would say marijuana cigarettes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, I'm in agreement with Kat. I mean, um, there's a lot of 
I'm not going to get into it here you know, on the whole soapbox thing, but I will say this. The Dow went over 25000 I would If this, they get rid of, they don't legalize marijuana, I would not be buying stock in Cheetos or Taco Bell. Mm, that is true. <laughs> true. Tyrus, do you think law enforcement kind of wants legalization because these unnecessary laws create unnecessary situations, right? Yes, and they put unnecessarily non-criminals in jail with criminals, which create more problems. Right. Here, here's the thing. May, Sessions, you got enough problems, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody likes you. You're almost close to getting a man Sessions at this point. You... Only reason why he did this, that's why it's a one page memo, he said, Obama, if I take something away that Obama did, Trump will love me again. No, bro, it's not gonna work. Now you done pissed everybody else off. <laughs> Leave the stuff alone. Focus on what you're supposed to be doing. It's just like I feel insurance, I feel it sh everything should be state by state. You make your decisions where you live. The people smoke, if people wanna smoke in California, great. If they don't wanna smoke in Louisiana, great. It's their choice, their state, let the people vote on it. Stay out of it. All right. <laughs> But Louisiana, it'd be cool if you could vote some stuff in. That'd be nice. Appreciate it. But You know, Tom, I think I'm for legalization, even though I know there will be consequences, because I think that life is about consequences. You can't prevent them. You just have to see what happens. Like, for, my theory is, because booze got there first, we are we are been trained to believe we could only handle one vice. And so everybody, no, we can do both. We can do alcohol. Martinis are fine after work, but you smoke pot, you go to jail. That's why I think that's our, we have to, unlearn this idea and I think it's a generational thing yeah and I think the younger generation has a grasp the Millennials kind of get it I think well that's because they're lazy potheads that's probably why <laughs> I wanted to sound like I wanted to sound like a Fox News contributor <laughs> those lazy potheads don't know what it's like to work anyway I occasionally smoke marijuana every single day and I know that that's <laughs> and I, was, I ruined I, your joke it stunts your growth no it's okay it was ruined before you said it um, <laughs> Here's the thing. Why? Why would you? He wants to crack down on it. Crack down on crack. You know. Yeah. Crack down on. Right now we have a heroin epidemic. Marijuana. Nobody's selling their body to get a bag of weed. You know what I mean? It's different. <laughs> marijuana. Sure, marijuana will make you laugh at your grandmother falling down the stairs. I grant that. <laughs> yes. But heroin will make you push your grandmother down yeah. the stairs. And crack will make you rob her when she lands at the bottom. And eat There's her. a difference between these drugs, and you can tax them. Colorado is a example of how wonderful it can be. I mm -hmm. think. And so I think they should. Leave. States' rights. As you said, leave yep. California alone. Do you know, um, I got to wrap it up, but I, you know what drives me crazy? And I, these are some, I'm talking about some of my friends. They, oh, they, when they, they want to ban something because they don't like it. That's not why you ban, that's not the criteria. I, Maroon, Maroon 5 would not exist <laughs> if it were up to me, but I'm not, you know, and the thing, it's like, it's like, I'm for legalizing prostitutions. I have never tried it. I don't think it's particularly healthy, but I believe it should be legal. I it's, agree. You know, it shouldn't, it's like, you don't ban something because you don't like it, because then there'd be nothing, right? Yeah. yeah. Thank so, you. Yeah. All right, somebody said well said into my ear. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everybody. All right, coming up. Will your online presence live on after you die? Seems kind of creepy, but why not? <laughs> Now, before you post something on social media, ask yourself this. Do you want it to live on long after you're dead and accessed by others when you're six feet under? Well, a Daily Beast article discusses a growing industry, digital immortality, that will collect your emails, tweets, Instagrams, put them in a place that your loved ones can interact with after you've kicked a bucket. That's odd. You're not there? You're not there and they're still dealing with your online self? Who, if you're me, was often a jerk. Do I want to be remembered for being a jerk? Come on, you know what you've been like online. You don't want to be remembered for it either. Like this fella who just realized what he's been putting out there. <laughs> Amen. Tyrus, my worst self is online. Of course you'd go to me, right? Man, come on. <laughs> Why? Is this going to be like your computer history and stuff, or like just stuff you posted? Uh, stuff you posted. Oh, cool. Yeah, I'm with that. Yeah, <laughs> all right. I just don't, you know, I don't want George the 12th or Tyrus the 3rd being like, <laughs> Great grandpa did all that? Yes, that's exactly my point. That's like, why my post is weightlifting, yeah. wrestling, and sitting on here. It's just generic, safe stuff.
Yeah, you know, um, I, I was thinking about doing, uh, Rob, I was thinking about it. Forget about you. Would you want to see the online accounts of your ancestors? Let's say they had the internet 200 years ago. Wouldn't that kind of kill the mystery? Oh, that, that is. Well, I mean, they're, they're making a lot of money with the whole Ancestry.com. Right. But I don't want a great be, company, I might add. I don't want to be the jackass that's been dressed in lederhosen for 40 years only to find out we're not German. Now, all of a sudden, I'm going to buy a kilt because I'm a loser. <laughs> I, don't, I don't get that whole thing. But, like, I'd have a problem with stuff in the future because there's a, I have a hard enough time. I take a flight from, like, New York to L.A., mm -hmm. had a few cocktails, and I tweet, and the next day I got to hit delete. Oh, I know. I don't need 35 years from now seeing some of the ridiculous stuff I came up with. It lives. <clears throat> it lives. I, mean, I feel bad enough when I'm the guy in first class saying, "Whoa, buddy, there's a bathroom in the back." Beat it. And <laughs> beat it. <laughs> hey, Greg, to go back to your point, I come from what you would say a diverse background. Mm -hmm. I think if we went back 50 years to some of my relatives on opposite <laughs> sides, be a little rough. We're uh, gonna escape. These guys can't keep us anymore. <laughs> oh, I wish they'd try to escape. Hashtag shoot you down. That's why you lost a foot. Oh yeah, that's why your kid's light skinned boss. You don't want to see. You know what I'm saying? We don't want those. That you know, it, it is a fair point. You know. Uh, <laughs> I'm just saying, I got. I'm erasing, Tom. Yeah. What if we had like all the online archives of Abe Lincoln, and it turned out he was a real jackass? We don't want to know that. Yeah. Well, that, thank God they didn't have the internet back then. Not well, how do we know that? Well, you're he could right. have destroyed it before. He well, may have. He may he have. That could president. have been the reason why John Wilkes Booth shot him. He was, it was over the internet. He was really <laughs> famous for writing the letters and putting them in the desk and not sending them. What if they found those and made a robot out of that? Exactly, a robot scroll. That's right. You can't. I think things are taken out of context. I have three sons, and I'm terrified of the stuff they're already going to find out about me, and I'm still alive <laughs> on the internet. Stuff that I posted or put in a video. So, uh, yeah, I think it's horrible that's going to live on in perpetuity, yeah, right? Perpetuity? Look, you'll be with perpetuity? That? Okay. Smir you'd be, you know, you'd be smirch perpetuity. I'd, yes. You don't want that. <laughs> the don't name of my next album. It's Jazz Fusion. Uh, you know, Kat. There's going to be no need for parchment, right? Because you, ever, all, there'll be no artifacts. Everything is I on Twitter. I think that we already don't really have a need for parchment. Well, artifact. You know, like you know, like you go over oh, here. Here, this is the Declaration of Independence. You no, know I'm saying like, you, are you going to have like your Twitter scroll under glass in your little museum? Yeah, and like all instead of the diaries that you've never like the found, found diaries, they'll just be podcasts that yes. you that you recorded <laughs> and thought no one would ever listen to playing over and over. Mm. I don't understand why anybody would want this. I kind of do. Really? Because, like, what kind of conversation are you going to have with them? Like, hey, what did you do today? Oh, I was charging all day. Like, you know, <laughs> like... I understand having mementos, but the idea of creating... Like, I think the long, what you're talking about is the, the ultimate effect, which is to create a facsimile of right. you. So somebody can say, hi, Kat, how are you? And it's like, hello, how are you? I don't talk like that at all. No, I am a libertarian. Actually, that's pretty good. Are they going to ever though, with the, the cryogenically frozen people? Like, Ted Williams is partially frozen. His right? head's somewhere. Oh, his head? oh, I'm definitely going to do that. Yeah. 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 Nah, that's freeze a bad my, idea. Myself. Oh, yeah. No, I, no, no, I no, no, no. You don't forever. want to do that. Oh, you go outside, it'll happen. You want to keep your body intact because if they're able, like right now, they're going to be able to recreate a woolly mammoth from DNA. You want to stay intact as a corpse. Yeah, I'm planning to. But Thank then you. again, no, that doesn't make sense because you could grow from the DNA. You don't need your body. You know, we should discuss this for the next Why is it so bad just to die and move on? Damn. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> just let go. And on that note, don't go anywhere. Cat has her own master class on cable news punditry. It should be highly entertaining, slightly informative, and possibly deadly. <laughs>
start every answer with absolutely. That way the host will like you and you'll get invited back. Remember, you're only three appearances away from being an expert on anything. You're gonna learn to form a strong opinion on any topic in five minutes or less. What do you do if the host asks a question and you don't know the answer? Answer with a question of your own. If that doesn't work, state a popular conspiracy theory and then say, hey, I'm just asking questions. You might find that anyone can do this job. I made a decision that I didn't want to die alone in an apartment with my cats. Being able to get out of the house, to earn money, to buy food so I don't die has been an incredible journey. And remember, food in the green room is free and unlimited. So take as much as you want. <laughs> soup in a purse, still soup. <laughs>